Hey, welcome everyone to One Touch Ministries, second on home gathering, uh, where our uh, episodic overseers are Pastor Shannon Young and Prophetess Nadija Young. And the campus minister is myself, Minister Henry Jackson. And we're going to uh, open up today's service with so a reading of scripture from Miss Barbara Jackson. Coming from Second Chronicle, this is the one about uh, reviving comes. It says um, verse chapter in Second Chronicle, chapter seven, verse eleven through fourteen. Do it for the Simon Simon finished the house of the Lord and the king house and all that came into Simon's heart to make it in the house of the Lord. And in his own house, he pursued it affection. And the Lord appeared to Simon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and I have chosen this place to myself for the house of sacrifice. If I, if I shut up the heavens, there would be no rain. Or if I commanded the locals to devour the land, or if I sent pestilence among, among my peoples. If my peoples, which is called by my name, shall humble thyself and pray and seek faith and turn from their wicked ways, then would I hear from heaven, and I forgive their sin, and I would heal their land. Now my eyes can, if my eyes see, shall be open, and my ears attend unto the prayer that if I <coughs> that you have made in this place. For now I have to choose to sacrifice this house, that my name may be there forever. And my eyes and heart should be there per perfectly. It, it will be some uh, article. And we see revival like this inscription as in Hezekiah days when the crowd joyful returned to God. And on the day of the Pentecost, when a thousand repented. Why revival is God's work done in His time, He should show prayer preceded it. If my people will humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn from their wicked way, God told Simon, I will forgive their sin. And, and we hear their land as the peoples of Anchor found the Bible bring joy and reconciliation to a town how our own city need such transformation Father bring it revival to us to us Lord we have been read and blessed okay yeah, well, uh, thank you uh, so much um, now we're going to uh, get into prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, yeah, we do thank you for uh, gathering this up inside of this place and to uh, uh, give you your worship and your praise. Yeah, we thank you this morning for waking us up and for putting us all in our right minds and for giving us the health, the strength, and, and the endurance to be able to, to get up and do the things that, that we, uh, I want to say, desire to do. We thank you for uh, allowing us to see another day. We, we thank you for putting food on our table, clothes on our back, and putting us in our right minds, and for uh, uh, yeah, allowing uh, things within our life to help us to 
I want to say would to give us encouragement day to day, whether it's through friends or 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 through a certain conversation from associates. Heavenly Father, I, I do I want you to bless every each individual. I pray for those that have lost any any people from through death, um, through sicknesses. Uh, that I do pray for each one of those in individuals right now. Um, pray for each one of those families, uh, those friends that are also connected with them, for they may have others that may be sick or may be lost. That we ask that those precious souls be brought back to your kingdom and, and accounted for that they could also see the glory and the life that your kingdom also has. Um, in the wonderful name of Jesus, the church saying, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Yeah, we're going to actually uh, going to uh, get into praise and worship. I dance like David, dance that I dance, dance. I dance like David, dance. Oh, I dance, dance. I dance like David, dance. I worship in the Lord from within upon my heart. Yeah, I sing like David sing. I worship with the Lord from within my heart. I sing like David sing. I sing. I sing. I sing, I sing like David. Sing, yeah, I sing, I sing, yeah, I sing, like David sing. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now, now we're going to get into, I want to say, testimony, uh, service. Um, yeah, I just want to uh, thank the Lord for, for actually... Um, yeah, explaining to me. Well, uh, me and uh, my pa me and Pastor Shannon uh, was talking Monday uh, on the Power Man night, and uh, no, the 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 sermon to I won't speak today has something to do with that. But um, no, I thank him for for giving me a a new I want to say yeah a new perspective on your know, ministry. Um, like earlier before I, I, I saw it as a, a weight, you know, into my life, it, it I kind of felt like it was, I felt, felt like ministry was holding me back from me, I want to say, living my life because it kept me busy. But how, for, but from the way how uh, Shannon explained it to me, you know, why he released me into, um, uh, about making me a campus minister inside of my, for well, me within this ministry was because he knew that God gave me words to to speak on. And so, you know, by him explaining to me in that way, I, I, thank, I thank the Lord for the uh, clarity. Um, because, yeah, we all have, you know, these in our lives that we see from a, for, from a wrong perspective. And, and and when we see it that way, we see something as a, being a weight to us rather than a blessing to us. And so I'm I'm just thankful that you know I got that you know clarification uh, from him, and that I now you know understand you know how how I can you know I want to say treat the ministry more better better than I did before, and so. Um, I just, again, I, I thank the Lord also for allowing me to touch those who my uh, Lord gave me the opportunity to speak for those words that it touches uh, those people who it need to touch. Um, yeah, as well, well as to, you know, I'm just thankful that, you know, I got, I'm giving, I got the opportunity to to do these things. Well, I think that he woke me up this morning and started the out of the day journey. But he didn't have to do it, but he did. And I just want to thank him 
but be able to bring us through another week and open our eyes and behold another week coming up. So we're just being thankful for our laying down last night and our early ride this morning, closing our right line. And thankful that we got to have this straight to take care of our, our patient and keep her cleaned up and keep her fed up and keep her happy. We love her and we do the best we can with what we got. So now we can actually uh, get into the sermon. If you do have your Bible, you can uh, go with me to the book of Luke. Um, and so you, when you get to the book of Luke, I'm going to start at chapter 13, uh, verse 10 through 17. Like my sermon for, for today, yet... Yeah, is about how do you see yourself? And so this scripture is, is actually a, a part of that. Uh, so we, so now I'm just going to read it to you. And it reads that around this time, he was teaching in the synagogue on, on the Sabbath, uh, uh, which is the Jewish day of rest. And a woman there had been sick for 18 years. She was weak, hunched over, and unable to stand up straight. Then Jesus placed his hand on her, and suddenly she could stand straight again. She started praising God, but the synagogue official was, I want to say, in, in the, in the, uh, Nenikit, uh, yeah, because Jesus had not kept their savage, a uh, Sabbath uh, uh, re regulations by 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 performing this healing. One of them spoke and said, "Look, there are six other days when it's appropriate to get work done. Come on, those days to be healed, not on the on the Sabbath." Verse 15 reads, Jesus spoke back and said, you, you re religious leaders are such hypocrites. Uh, every single one of you unties his ox or donkey from his manger every single Sabbath day. And then you lead it out to get a drink of water, right? But then, but do you care about your farm, so do you care more about your farm animals than you care about this woman, which is uh, one of one of uh, Abraham's daughters, oppressed by Satan for 18 years? So we can't, can't we untie her from her oppression on the Sabbath? Then as the impact of his word settled in, his critics were humiliated, but everyone else loved what Jesus said and celebrated everything he was doing. And so when we do understand the outline of this text, um, yeah, we do understand that, you know, if, if, if you don't understand the story, um, no, the Sabbath that they was returning about was, uh, I believe they, they, this was on a, a Saturday. Uh, when Jesus went, he normally would go to the temple to go pray uh, 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 Saturdays. And this particular day, he decided to go in to go pray. And a woman walked in who was, I want to say, suffering from an illness, as the Bible was referring to. And the, the, the fact that Jesus, uh, he, he didn't look at the woman from his perspective but he was looking at uh what she was struggling with from her perspective and so the 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 synagogue which is the i, I want to say which is the i want to say the Sarag the Saragis, which was the one who who was entered into keeping the law and so they got mad at jesus for healing the woman because they were telling him you folks to wait until sunday you know, to heal the woman. And so you healed her on the day when we supposed to be resting. And instead of resting, you, you know, doing healings. 
And so Jesus pointed out to them, oh, you, so you think that the, 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 the ox or your donkeys or uh, there are other things that's in your life that's more uh, uh, acceptable to you rather than you understanding by looking at this woman and noticing uh, that she has a problem and you're not willing to help her, but you're willing to help yourself. And so uh, from this perspective, uh, as I said during my testimony, when Pastor Shannon was saying to me, when he explained to me um, uh, what is my ministry was for, or the reason why he assigned me this task was so I can, uh, 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 so I cannot have a feeling of me wanting, of me having to do it because I felt, you know, ministry is something that I had to do, you know. So because I looked at it from the wrong perspective, I saw it as me having, like I had to do it. So I had to come with a word and I had to, and instead of me approaching it from a desirable place, I came at it from the, the wrong perspective. And so these, uh, I want to say these, these people in the synagogue was looking at this woman issue from the wrong perspective. They're look, looking at her from, oh, you, you, you not following the rules, you know, because you came in on a Saturday for it to come tomorrow. And, you know, they're, they're looking at the rules rather than looking at her situation and understanding why she was coming in. Um, and, and, and so, you know, within our lives, you know, we, we can look at things that's going on in our life and we could uh, have our own perspectives of why we think, why things happen in our lives for and the, the reason why it happened. But until we do get some understanding in why things happen the way that they happen, and to try to get some clarification on it, we're 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 really not going to understand that that thing that we look at as a weight to us is really not a weight; it's really a blessing. And so, you know, within my personal conviction, me looking at my ministry as is something that's keeping me back from my music because this ministry keep me busy when this. Certain, I, I gotta have my sermons on Sunday. I gotta help out Pastor Shannon and with there. And so, me having more days to do with ministry than I am dealing with my music. To me, it felt like as if this was like a weight. To me, it's keeping me back from the things that I really want to do. And so, there are certain things, or there are certain people that's in your life that you may feel that's holding you back or that's keeping you from doing what you really want to do. But until you uh, want to say, uh, until you understand from that person's point of view or or you not understanding the reason why God gave you those things for is, is the same thing what God told Apostle Paul. I'm not going to remove the, what, what do you say? I'm, I'm not going to remove the, the 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 uh, I forgot the 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 state that's in this you know uh, oh, yeah sad. yeah the thorn on this side and the reason why the Lord didn't want to remove it because he know then he wasn't going to understand the reason why he had him moving the way he had him moving and and so you know the fact that the thorn was on this side is the pressure that he needed to keep him moving. So if God would have removed it, the problems that was in his life, then he wouldn't have had nothing probably to preach about. And so, so in this scenario, um, so we are not understanding in our lives certain things that are in our lives that we see as a that we see as a weight, uh, and because we're not really understanding when we have those things, then what are their I mean, then what is the purpose of those things? And so us having a wrong perspective uh, where it can be in, in actually a hindrance to us and it can feel like a weight rather than as a blessing to us. Um, and, and so, 
you know, as again, I said, I thank uh, Pastor Shannon for explaining to me uh, the reason why uh, uh, he, he has signed me to this assignment for. And, and when he said that, it, it really turned on a light switch in my head and it really helped me to understand, well, maybe I'm looking at it the wrong way. And and so 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 sometimes you gotta just admit to yourself that I'm seeing things, you know, the wrong way. And so that's why I see it as a weight rather than as a blessing to me. You know, so you know, everything that is in my life and the people that's in my life, um, I'm starting to understand uh that I have to look at them as like how Jesus looked at the woman that came in that wanted to be healed, you know, um, of course, you know, uh, Jesus probably didn't feel like being bothered with someone with the sickness. Uh, but however, when she walked in, he was able to understand her perspective and understand where she was coming from. And that's how he was able to be a blessing to her. And I, and I believe those men that was in the synagogue could have been a blessing to her as well if they would have looked at her uh, the the right way instead of looking at you know uh, just your agenda, but you looking at from their perspective, you can see and how you can be a blessing to someone in their life. Yeah, I just want to actually uh, speak uh, to you into your life the sevenfold blessings. Um, yeah, I, I speak blessings of health for you and your family. I speak blessings of deliverance from any habits that you have in your life. Number three, I speak blessings of peace to your mind from anybody or anything that may be disturbing you. Number four, I speak blessings of salvation to any friends or loved ones. Number five, I speak blessings of comfort to any person that is hurting, that is lonely, that are breathing, or that is confused. Number six, I speak blessings of finances, debt cancellation, prosperity, uh, economic empowerment to all of God's people according to his riches and glory. And number seven, I speak blessings of anointings and promotions in your life to complete your assignment, to move forward in your in your purpose. Now we're going to ask you going to go into the uh, band addiction part of the service. So uh, if you do have your Bibles, if, if, for those that are, Watching, if you got your Bible, you can follow us on uh, the book of Numbers, chapter 6. And we're going to read together verse 6, I mean, verse 24, 25, and 26. Uh, uh, we're going to be speaking this from the message translation. Uh, and it reads, May God bless you. May God keep you. May God smile on you. May God gift you. May God look you full in the face and make you prosper.